Change sparks a lot of fear. What do I have direction over? What do I have the capacity to pivot toward with an open heart and an open mind that I feel called toward? Are we really fearing change itself? Or are we fearing our inability to control what's around us? The one thing in life that is certain is that things are going to change. How many times do these things happen where it's, it doesn't go as we planned and we get so caught up in the fear, well, oh, I'm never going to experience what I wanted to. It's a huge change. And is it even possible then to use that as self-transformation or transformation of anything? And I would offer yes. It's really hard to adapt when you're caught in fear or stress or anxiety because you feel stuck. The one thing in life that is certain is that things are going to change. And with change comes transition, right? And then it's up to us. I know in our last podcast, we talked a lot about emotions and not being battered around by our emotions. The same is true for transition, right? Because transition brings up emotion. And often it is, we like our comfort. We like the known. And when we're in change cycle and transformation, then it doesn't feel like that transition feels more scary. So we want to talk about how to use transition and turn that into transformation. Hmm. And that can be whatever it is that is transitioning in your life. How do you do that with heart? How do you do that with an open heart and a desire to gain something from it? Instead of allowing it to be yet one more thing in our lives that's just knocking us around. And that's a very easy thing to feel when you're in the midst of that. Right. Yeah. Change sparks a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. And it's, it's when we, especially when it feels like, oh, we, we you know, we, we just had a change. <laughs> you know, we're just getting settled in. It's kind of just happening right now. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, there we're. We're back into the flow again. Yes. And I know in the last podcast as well, I talked about the loss of my brother, which the loss of somebody that we love is a huge transition. It's a huge change. And is it even possible then to use that as self-transformation or transformation of anything? And I would offer yes. It can very well be used as not only transformation, obviously the individual who's passed has transformation going on, right? They are transitioning and therefore there has to be some form of transformation. But can I do the same thing? Can I see it as an opportunity to positively transform while still holding on, as we talked about, to the emotion of feeling sad and the loss and the gratitude of having had that person in my life. But my life can't stay the same, right? It can't. When somebody transitions, whatever your belief system is of that, you still, your life is going to change because they're no longer there in the capacity that they were before. So what then are you going to do with that? How are you going to allow it to either propel you in a different direction? Because whomever it is likely wouldn't want you to sit and be sad and that to be the change for the rest of your life. So how do you utilize that to have your own transformation and transition into a new stage of your life? right? And do it with that heart-centered approach and that love, which is not easy, right? We can also say the same thing about career, about, you know, just aging in general. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of ageism comments recently, like fear of younger people aging, and especially now with our 
modern world of just get Botox, just get fillers. Mm -hmm. And I honor that. Everyone should do what they desire to do. But when that sparks a fear of aging, what are we missing in that transition in our lives that brings about huge transformation? So right. I want to dive in. Yeah, let's do it. Well, let's start maybe well, what sparks the fear? You know, um, for me, I feel that it's we experience fear when we when we think where our heads when we're, especially when we're overthinking. I feel like that that initiates a lot of cycling in fear and anxiety and stress. And we're looking into the future or we are approaching our present from a space of looking into the future. So we're not actually in the present moment experiencing what's happening now. And I feel like that's maybe some of the disconnect. And by doing that, we are so caught up in our heads. Well, you know, what if this happens? What if this happens? And what about when that happens? And, and so we are, we are getting our bodies like kind of like when we have dreams, right? Like our bodies respond. We are, you know, we don't, the body doesn't know the difference between a, a dream and what's happening. Like our bodies can get really stressed. And, and trust me, I've had this, like where I'm like, you know, feeling like I'm like, like this. And in a dream, like maybe I was racing a car or something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Such you know, a good or, dream, you know, but it doesn't mean yeah. you're not like, yeah. yeah. And, but our bodies don't know the difference. And so, we are putting ourselves through this stress and, and a lot of things aren't, haven't even actually happened. And so what that does is it keeps ourselves in that, in that fight or flight. And then it, it trains us in how we respond to change, which is if you were to maybe even logically look at it, that doesn't even make sense. Because like you said, the only constant is change. Our, on, even on a scientific level, like the universe is constantly expanding. Therefore, it means it's constantly changing. Yeah. And so there is, if we are in the same space, then we are stagnant. We are not moving. We are not growing. That is not helpful. Yeah. And so if there were maybe our opportunities to view it from that perspective, if we are the same, maybe that is the one thing to fear is stagnation because that is against the natural order of the way the whole universe is working right now. And I would say it's not even possible to not change. As you pointed out, like biologically, if we're living, we're changing, yeah. right? There's always change, whether it's in our physical form, because, you know, how we treat our body will determine which direction it is navigating each day. Right. So if I suddenly started eating Big Macs every day, no slam on Big Macs, but there is something that's been proven. There's a movie about it. There's science out there. That's going to change my body. But if I choose to eat healthy foods that like salads and the things that I know are going to fuel my form, then my body's going to change into a different direction. Mm -hmm. And so when we're talking about transformation and using transitions to help with that transformation, it is understanding that there's always the end of something, but that's the beginning of something else. And so what are we looking at? Are we looking at the end and thinking, oh no, I can never go backward? When the truth is you can never go backward anyway. Mm -hmm. Or are we looking at it like, wow, I get to embrace and embark on this new aspect of my journey and it will keep changing. But which, which path do I want to take? Because every time I'm standing before all these different paths, everything that's happening in my life, and I could very easily choose to go down and feed my body with things that are not going to make it feel well. And I'll learn something from that. Mm -hmm. I'll learn from it. There will be information that I can gain. But if I want to feel better and I desire to have that experience, then I need to walk down that path and embrace that change in my, 
Maybe it's in my diet. Maybe it's in my exercise. Maybe it's in, you know, just what I surround myself with stress wise so that I'm not releasing all those stress hormones and holding on to things. Mm -hmm. But then I get to choose. I'm going to end the cycle I'm in right now and I'm going to begin. I'm going to transition into this new. So that as my body continues to progress forward, because I'm not going to change that, at least I have direction over how it's progressing forward. Does yeah. that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, I think that that description helps create the question that I feel like is so important to reflect on. Are we really fearing change itself? Or are we fearing our inability to control what's around us? I'm using control very specifically there because a lot of people want to control the uncontrollables. Mm -hmm. And the reality is we don't have any control anyways. We can direct our actions. And the reason, just for on a side note, the reason why we use direct, like direction over control is because typically the word control is not used in a positive way. There, there holds a heaviness uh, to the energy of the word. When you're controlling something, uh, it's usually a one way. Mm -hmm. It's not a two way. And it's usually putting something else, you know, putting whatever you're doing ahead of something else or someone else. But when you're directing something, it becomes a two way experience. Um, and, and so that's kind of why we choose to use the word direction. You know, that's just our choice. You know, just for us, it kind of helps us uh, align the energy of the word with the action that we're seeking to take. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of preface that for those who are listening. Um, but it, it, is, it is really important that I, I, to understand and differentiate that, that we think that maybe we're afraid of change, but the reality is we're just afraid that we can't, we aren't in conscious direction of what's going on. Right. And so, and it does feel that way when we don't have awareness of what we need to do, then, then we blame it on change. Yeah. But when we do have a, either a clear path or a clear understanding, we have that clear direction, then we're not so worried about change. And oh, weird, you know, fear starts to fall away. Yeah. And so maybe it's that opportunity to recognize, yeah, it's not the change. It's the actions I'm taking. It's the habits that I'm, I'm putting into action. And to me, it's more of uh, maybe uh, a lack of personal responsibility, which is a really tough topic. Yes, it is. And we'll get to that topic because I yeah. really want to talk about that. Yes. Um, and even if we don't do it today, sure. it is something that we all, I obviously I can't make a blanket statement. Maybe not everyone on the planet feels this way, but many people, it is not easy. Not that we don't desire to take personal responsibility. It is, how do I take personal responsibility? How do I navigate the emotions and all the things that come up when I take personal responsibility? And how do I navigate my ego mm -hmm. when it comes to personal responsibility? So that could be like a long talk even in itself. Yeah, maybe um, drop, drop a comment below if that's something you'd like us to do a podcast about um, and have a deeper dive into. Uh, we'll kind of touch on that subject today, but yeah, it'd be really awesome. So if you're listening to this now, let us know and, and we'll do that. Yay. But I think um, another thing is kind of helplessness, right? When we feel like we aren't in direction of, of our actions, uh, it does make us feel helpless. It makes us feel vulnerable. It makes us feel weak, which I think are more things that we fear rather than change itself. Yes. And if you're not present and you don't feel that internal power, that empowered, right? Mm. Then as these transitions happen in your life, you don't have that clear direction over where you're going to point the ship that is your life, right? We feel as though I don't have, I don't have the helm. So how can I direct my own ship? But if we do take the time to stay present and understand what's, what's happening, not what we think will happen, it's great to have contingency plans, right? To If you feel into the future and you feel like, wait a second, there are all of these different potentials that could unfold. And I desire to be prepared for all of them. 
So if it happens, I know where I'm going to direct myself. That's a beautiful thing to do. But don't stay there. And don't hang out in the fear of the worst outcome. Mm. Because then you're pulling that one toward you, Mm -hmm. right? That's the experience you feel you're going to have. It's the experience you have even if something different happens. You've spent so much time focused on that buoy out in front of you, but that's where you've directed your life ship. And so if we get the chance to say, okay, I have it covered now. I have all of these plans that I feel like when it presents itself, I at least have an idea of the direction I'd go regardless. Then you come back to the present moment and you understand the experience that is happening. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to point yourself in the accurate direction. I like that. Yeah, that's important to to highlight that what we put our focus on, that's the reality that we experience. And so maybe that can help us relieve that, ourselves of that fear and that stress. Because oftentimes I say, oh, well, I don't want this to happen, but I keep putting my focus on it. And then it happens. They're like, oh, there, now, now life is happening to me and against me instead of with me and for me. Yeah. And so uh, that can help us get a little bit more, as you're saying, empowerment of, of our actions and our choices to create our future experiences. But every future moment that we have is experienced in the present. And so the more awareness and conscious choice we can place into the present moment based on what we desire to experience in the future, that can really help us navigate our transitions with a lot more purpose, intention, and in many ways, elegance. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> because it's 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 saying, okay, well, I this is what I desire. I know this in my heart. I know this in my head. And this action that I take is going to uh, fulfill me now and in the future. Yeah. It's hard to be fearful when that happens. Yeah. I you know, it's I always use kind of the experiences of my life to understand how uh, many concepts in life work. And one concept I constantly pull back to the forefront is sports. And when I was engaged in sports, right, as a young person, I had my dad was amazing and he really desired me to have a very well rounded life experience so then I can make informed choices of what fit for me. And so as a result of that, I played baseball, I played softball, I played basketball. And in every one of these sports, I even played football with my brothers Mm -hmm. out in the yard. Every one of these sports, it was always shown to me that where you put your attention, where you look is where the ball is going to go and is exactly where you're going to go, even if you don't intend to. Plus, during that transition, maybe somebody else is up to bat in baseball. There's somebody else up to bat. You're not the pitcher, so you have no direction over the pitch. And you're not the batter, so you have no direction over the trajectory of the ball. But if you're playing in the outfield or you're playing one of the bases, you have to be present and always think about, okay, if there's a runner on first and I'm playing third base and the ball gets hit my direction, do I throw it to second? Do I throw it to first? How will I know? Mm -hmm. That way, I stand the chance of getting someone out. But if I haven't pre-thought and then gotten out of that, and maybe the ball doesn't even get hit to me. Maybe the ball gets hit somewhere else. If all I'm focused on is, oh, I'm going to throw it to first base. I'm going to throw it to first base. When it comes to me, I'm going to throw it to first base. Then if it gets hit over my head, then Instead of letting the outfield take care of it, I'm going to go running back and I'm going to do my best to catch that ball because I have to fulfill what I've had my eye on instead of I have a plan. Mm -hmm. And if the ball doesn't come to me, that's okay too. Right? I like that. And sports are great if you are someone who enjoys sports to help us understand like we're always changing and we're always transitioning and things are always moving forward. But how we direct our responses in those will be the key to how we experience them. Mm -hmm. Am I going to throw my glove? Ah, I was going to save it. I was going to make sure somebody got out. 
Or am I going to be like, oh, okay, well, that's, that's what just happened. And I had a plan, didn't need to put it into action. All right, next batter up. Here we go. Right. I like that. I think that's a great, no pun intended, transition into what happens if what you didn't want occurs. You know, then what do you do? Right. Mm -hmm. Because that is a transition. And I see this a lot in golf, um, not only for myself, but for others. Um, you know, maybe you hit a great tee shot and you're in the middle of the fairway. We're going to continue this question analogy here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go sports. Hit a great tee shot. You are in the middle of the fairway. You, you, you want to get it. Your goal is to birdie the hole. You want to get it on the green close so you can make a nice birdie, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then you hit it in the sand trap. It's not where you wanted to go. People get mad and upset. And then, from there, I've seen people, you know, knock it in for birdie from there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but before that, they were mad. They were slamming their club. They're, you know, getting mad at themselves and frustrated. It's like, this is what, what I wanted. This isn't how I pictured this hole. And then the whole time, like once that's, once they hit, hit it in the hole for birdie from the sand trap, and then they have this whole opposite experience. They're like elated and they're so excited. And my favorite thing to do when that happens is to say, hey, well, if you wouldn't have hit it in the trap, then you wouldn't have had this experience. Mm -hmm. And then it's every single time their face like totally, you can just see kind of the wheels turn and it's like this, yeah, you're right. Like I never would have thought about that way. So how many times do these things happen where it's, it doesn't go as we planned? And we get so caught up in the fear, well, oh, I'm never going to experience what I wanted to. But what, you know, what if you did hit the green and then you two putted and you made par? But if you miss the green like you did and you made birdie because you were in the trap, you got something maybe even greater than you could have anticipated. So oftentimes these things occur, these transitions happen in our lives that aren't as intended or they don't happen as we viewed them. But maybe there were key steps in our lives that were imperative to allow us to experience a greater version of what we could have ever imagined. And so that's part of the allowance. That's part of releasing the fear in this idea of control of that we have to be in direction or we have to be in control of everything that happens in order to create the situation that is to me then then we're not we're almost not letting ourselves be the natural creator being that we are like that's part of part of creation is allowing like it's it's releasing it's letting go it's surrendering to the experience so it could be even grander than we ever could imagine yes Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. And a key to allowing that, like for me, I'm always, what tools can I take? What can, what can I bring to this life party that I'm experiencing right now to keep myself from, because you're right, we all like to feel in control. But when we fight that, when we fight that feeling of I need to control this versus which is like being on that boat in the water, right? And thinking that somehow you're going to control the weather, you're going to, going to control the rapid that you're actually finding yourself in. We learned when we were on a cruise that there are all kinds of things outside of our control mm -hmm. that can impact how we are going down that stream or whatever we want to envision it. But what we do always have, if we hold on to that need to control, we're going to constantly be spending our energy outside of ourselves and we're never going to be focused on what is happening. Therefore, we lose our opportunity to direct where we're going. And so we can't spend all of our time attempting to control the wind because you can't, but we can spend our time understanding as I am going through this transition in my life and the wind is battering me around and it feels like I'm in the most tumultuous waters. What do I have direction over? What do I have the capacity to pivot toward? with an open heart and an open mind that I feel called toward that could be my safe harbor 
for a moment to relax because there's nothing wrong with sitting in a state of relaxation for a moment before the next transition or the next change happens. Mm -hmm. That's good. It gets our feet under us. We're using the ship analogy continuing. It gives you time to restock your supplies, right? Mm -hmm. To make sure you have everything that you need mm -hmm. as you head back into your journey of life. But we can't just sit and spend our energy on things that cannot be directed by us mm -hmm. or, more importantly, controlled by us. So when I have that feeling of I need to control, then one of the tools that I use is bringing that vision back in of my life is an ebbing and flowing stream. And what, what do I have direction over right now to make sure that I don't run ashore when I don't intend? What do I have direction over to keep myself from being battered around by the elements around me? So that as I'm navigating this, I'm also gaining new skills, right? Because I've not experienced this transition before, maybe. I've not experienced what is happening. So if I use the skills that I do know, and I use those to direct me, then I'll be gaining more information and new skills in order to help me the next time something similar to this happens. Mm -hmm. So I can have that vision. So have a visual to help you remember not to fight the wind mm -hmm. during or transition, and that's transformational. I love that. And it's beautiful. And to me, it, it, it highlights a key part of transition, which I feel like is a, a skill of learning adaptability. It's really hard to adapt when you're caught in fear or stress or anxiety because you feel stuck, you feel lost, you feel directionless. Yeah. And so adaptability is a great skill to attain because it gives you that, it can create clarity where there might not be any. And it helps you let go of what you think it should be and allows it to be something, again, greater than what's possible. And so it's important to recognize, like, you know, accepting whatever situation and letting go um, that these aren't just like, Ooh, we'll just see whatever happens in the world. That's not what we're saying. It's, it's important to have, you know, goals and ideas and, and what you can actually, you know, like a plan. Yes. But understanding that it does, the rigidity is not what, what leads to the completion of the plan. That is not, it's, it's, it's really the process and there are so many ways that can, it can be experienced. And oftentimes when we hold to the rigidity, we get in our own way. And, you know, that is, that is something to fear is ourself is getting in our own way and not allowing something greater to be able to happen to us that we couldn't have imagined. Yeah. And so when we can get out of our own way and allow our heart, you know, to me, that's like when we get stuck up in our head, we get in our own way. When we get into our heart, that's when we learn how to let go and surrender. And that's where the creativity and um, just all our, our creator being in the now moment like allows us to completely unfold. And, and that's when we feel like in sports. To me, that's what it means to be in the zone. We have that experience or we might experience in life as luck. But oftentimes luck is just when opportunity and persistence meet. Yeah. And so these, these are our ways of getting out of, you know, getting out of our own way, allowing life to unfold, having a, a clear plan, but being willing to be adaptable so you can reach what you desire. Yeah. So I'd like to get some clarification. Um, you said that fear, the one thing we sh should fear is rigidity. Mm -hmm. Why for you does it seem like we should fear rigidity? Um, uh, that's a good question. Um, I think for me, it's just when I feel rigidity, I feel like I am, that to me is, is a, the wanting to control the situation. Mm -hmm. And that's me wanting to get in, I tend to get in my own way. And so it creates an outcome that I don't desire. And so I end up putting focus and effort and then I feel tired and I feel exhausted. And then it's like, oh, then the whole world is happening. Everything's happening against me. So it puts me down this path that I don't enjoy. 
Yeah. And so for me, that that's what, you know, I, if I were to have some kind of fear around it, it is the, it is a fear around that pathway. And it tends to be when I'm just get bullheaded and I get stuck, you know, stuck in my head. This is the way it has to be. And, you know, this I is, have this is, spoken. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> this is the way, you know, or, you know, and so, um, you know, I'm not saying it's, you know, the whole part of this is to release fear and let go. But that's, it's, again, it's easier said than done. It's not easy to just stop being fearful. And, and yeah. as we kind of talked about on a previous podcast, it isn't about like not having fear. It's about how do you have less fear? Yes. And so when you can identify areas, you know, that, that's for me is a way that I can have less fear is by identifying where my fear actually exists. And so it's not on the fear of change. It's not in the fear of transition. It's not even in the fear of like, I don't have a plan. It's the fear that I am so stuck in one way of the plan that I'm getting in my own way. And that's beautiful. Being able to express, like, this is what my fear, this is where my fear pops up. Mm -hmm. And then navigating your way through that fear, right? Even the fear of rigidity. Mm -hmm. Yes. The more rigid you are, the quicker you break, mm. right? Mm. That there's a very defined alliance between rigidity and fracturing or breaking because you don't have the fluidity of the movement, right? But to fear that, you might go back in and say, well, maybe breaking is exactly what I need to reseed myself and grow stronger than I was before. And that would mean that fearing rigidity would mean fearing that forward growth. But that doesn't mean that it's not still there, mm -hmm. that it's not still present. But, and I don't mean to use you real time, yeah, but we do don't. this, right? Yeah. That's the one thing that you should fear. Mm -hmm. We're like making it a blanket statement. Yes. But for, Others, maybe rigidity is exactly what they need at that point in order to move forward and have a transition become transformation. Mm -hmm. And so, is there really a need to fear it as a blanket whole, or is it just identifying this is my fear? And knowing that it is my fear, then I know what I can do with it. Mm -hmm. And that's having the open heart, right? The, yes. all right, I'm not going to pretend like I'm not afraid of something. Mm -hmm. We're all like, there's, every one of us has more than one fear. Yeah. I can promise you that. But it's what we do in that fear and how we use even that as transformation that will help us continue to progress in the direction that we choose to go. Yeah. Well said, right. and thank you for that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a very good point. Um, it's sometimes when flowing through fear and fearing less, sometimes it's important to identify, as we were talking about, like what are the actual fears and what do we think we fear? Mm -hmm. And so... Um, yeah, I mean, for for me, it's definitely it's definitely that rigidity, um, because I know what it ends up the pattern I end up going down when I follow that. Um, not that I don't like if I there are times where I still choose it, you know. Yeah. And and it's because uh, you know, and, and it's still it's always a learning opportunity. But now more than ever, I have the ability to recognize when I'm choosing it, and then make a different choice. But when I'm when I say like I actively like okay it is something that I fear then I tend to choose it less, and so like that for me is like an approach to say okay well I have less fear I've identified what I do fear, and then that can that can give me that conscious direction to make a different choice, uh, more regularly, yeah, which is very helpful. And so when I do make it and then I catch myself in it and I'm like. Oh yeah. Okay. Here I Here go. I am I did in my it. way. I know exactly. I know exactly. Like because I've I've identified what it is and the patterns that I create on it, in some way it gives me clarity. 
And so I know exactly what I need to do. So instead of fearing it from a place of I don't know what to do and I don't have clarity, I have clearly identified the fear and the, the path that I take. And that almost is a step into the greater clarity, which is what I need in order to fulfill the transformation that I am seeking. And so in essence, it's still a pathway that can be taken, but it's not the pathway I typically desire to take to learn well, I, it's it's not learned the most because I can learn in any way. Yeah. Um, it, there's a open ended for that, but it's not the one I most enjoy. Yeah, it's <laughs> not the one you that. align not with. Not You're not like, hey, I want to do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so it's it's it, it's wonderful because even in the fear, I have clarity. But I would prefer to have clarity in a different way. Yeah. Where some people may fear being so fluid, they see it as wishy washy. Mm -hmm. and that doesn't fit for them. Yeah. And so that's why it is such an individual journey, yeah. right? We're all kind of steering our ships in different directions mm -hmm. so that as these transitions happen in our life, the transformation that fits best for us, like we're not Cinderella, we're not all gonna like slide right into a perfect slipper. Most of us are the stepsisters. Life's never gonna feel very comfortable on our foot, right? Yeah. <laughs> We have to be willing to be like, oh, okay. So even when you talk about, like for me, the fear that I know I have is always fear around the transition of a loved one, right? And then I didn't know when my brother transitioned, you know, I'm like, oh, I, my worst fear has been realized. I got the call and I'm just like, ugh, what do I do? But then there was a part of me that was able to say, what a beautiful opportunity to hold in my truth in my present moment that which I say I believe. Mm. Because up till now, I've just said I believe this. Mm. Now I have to be present in the moment with my beliefs. And in that particular one, like I feared the loss of somebody I care about, it's happening. But I also strongly believe that this body is only the vehicle or the boat in which we're going through the river of life. When my brother left that body, it doesn't mean that he no longer exists. It means that he's simply not steering the same ship. Mm -hmm. and. It's not easy to hold on to my true direction, my true north, my true beliefs when I'm cycling in sorrow. So at that point, then I'm glad I had my compass with me, my ability to say, hey, yes, this was a fear. Inevitably, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. None of us get out of here alive, mm -hmm. as you always say. <laughs> so the the moment for me to have the transformation was to say here's where i step up and i put myself where i've said my beliefs are mm -hmm. and i experience them fully and i celebrate the life of my brother and i celebrate his transition into whatever that is right but for me, my transition can come in multiple ways. So which direction do I want to steer first? It doesn't keep me from steering the other directions first or after, but I have to know the first. And the first direction I chose as I was sitting up in our beautiful space and nature up in Flagstaff, Arizona, I'm like, all right, it's a natural part of life. This is the natural flow. So how then do I embrace the natural flow and allow myself to be where I am, but also directionally know that this is my opportunity to step up? I love that. Yeah. Thank you for that. It's taking that moment to say, you know, thank you universe for giving me that opportunity to learn more about myself. 
and using that as a compass mm -hmm. when navigating transition is incredible. Kind of like what we've talked about in the past, you know, when you ask when you desire to understand yourself as a patient person, you know, we've said you don't just get little pixie dust of patience sprinkled on you and this, ooh, I'm, I'm patient. Like, no, there are opportunities that come forward that allow you to choose to be patient in the situation. Same goes with transition and how you choose to experience it. Uh, you know, do you want to see yourself as someone who can be adaptable and be empowered through transition no matter what is going on? Is that a way for you to recognize who you are and experience yourself at the greatest capability uh, of your potential, uh, no matter what is going on? And so we're going to have all types of different transitions in our lives. And when we can have a repeatable process that is empowering, that is heart-centered, that allows us to continue to grow and use the skills like adaptability, we can navigate a lot. We can be in direction, we can have a conscious choice, and we can express our creative being through that. And we can experience ourselves at a level that we never knew possible. And then we can enjoy a life that we never knew possible. That's a beautiful thing. It's magical. You know, I will say, I've transitioned a lot throughout my lifetime. And those, I don't know if anybody else who's listening to this or you have ever felt like you've had so many lifetimes in a single lifetime yeah. because so many different things have occurred. And I've had so many different stages in my life where I'm like, okay, but that meant that if I've had so many different lifetimes in a single lifetime, that part of me died mm -hmm. in order for a new part to be born. That's a transition in and of itself. But that is the transformation. I am certainly not the same person today that I was 20 years ago. And that's, to me, a beautiful, beautiful thing because I love who I am today and who I was 30 years ago, 20 years ago, was had far more fears and was knocked around by life a lot more than I am today. But I needed that in order to get to where I am today. And so when we look at the transitionary stages of our own life, it helps us understand that we can do it because we've been doing it our entire life. It's just now we can become more consciously aware of how we're navigating it. Mm -hmm. Right. We are never given what we can't handle. Yeah. And I feel like that is a huge key to all of this is recognizing things are going to change. We're going to age. It doesn't matter what you do. You're in a linear progression of time, which means that aging will occur at what rate it occurs, how you feel as it occurs, what you take in every moment as it's occurring. Those are things you have direction over. Those are things that you can look at and go, what am I going to do if this is something that I currently am focused on that transition in my life? Mm. Okay, then I can make choices based on that. Or if the transition is coming through a career change, maybe one you didn't anticipate. Maybe it is we were just with someone who had been laid off. and. It nearly crushed their world. But they were able to say, maybe this opens up possibilities for me. And then that person ended up getting the job they always desired, something they wouldn't have gone for if they were still employed at the first place. They would have been perfectly fine being there. But a transition in their life that caused them to really inward reflect and say, what do I need to do? right now to not get caught in that cycle of self-pity and self-doubt. What can I do? And then, of course, you have other ships that come in and help navigate you. If you've ever been on a ship, you know that there are the little tugboats that can come in and, and serve. And that's what we can all be. Like for this person, you and I were their tugboat, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of helping them get back into a direction where they're like, oh, yeah, I am empowered. I get to choose. Mm -hmm. 
and they got this amazing job that they love going to every day instead of the one where they didn't feel as happy and elated. Right. It's the sand trap birdie right there. Exactly. Nothing wrong with the par. But sand trap birdies are more fun. <laughs> yes. So we do have these in every stage of our life. Yeah. So if the visual is helpful for you, I love it. It means a lot to me. It helps me see things and make those um, connections like who's my tugboat mm -hmm. in this one? Who can I trust to help guide me back mm -hmm. if I feel like I'm getting close to running ashore or I'm ready to dock for a moment to just relax? Who's going to help me get to that space? Mm -hmm. um, if this visualization doesn't fit for you, find one that does. That helps you understand transformation comes through transition, comes from something maybe it doesn't even fully end, but it is winding down so that a new something can happen. Mm 